Welcome and thank you for joining us uh, for another Jane Irrigation Training Series. And um, today we're going to be talking about nano bubble technology. And I'll tell you why I really wanted to uh, discuss this today. Um, number one, uh, I know many of you out there are like me and are always trying to improve your soil health. Right, soil health is really important to water management. The healthier the soil, uh, the better uh, you're going to do as far as uh, yields and productions in your in, in your fields or in your gardens. Probably use less water. And if you're like me, you know, on any given day, you can see me walking out to the worm bin, feeding my worms, using what they produce, putting it back in the garden. And it's a lot of work, but it's for for a good reason. That's to improve that soil health. So I'm always thinking there's probably a better way to do this. Now, uh, we had um, the uh, uh, Warren from uh, Moliere on a few months ago, and he was talking about this nano bubbler technology, and uh, I was quite impressed with it. And uh, it really caught my attention. I've been looking at it some more. And then, uh, then I was talking to Frank um, Tovez, and Frank uh, has been so successful in installing and using this technology I thought, here's somebody, right? Frank, uh, Frank's works for irrigation design and construction. He works directly with the end user customers. His reputation's on the line whenever he recommends something or puts it in. You know, the difference that he makes for his customer really is the difference he makes for himself and for IDC. So if anybody's uh, on the line for making this count, making it work and really getting the straight story as to whether or not this technology it works, uh, it's gonna be Frank. And uh, as everyone knows, you know, when you think of forward thinking, ag technology, uh, Frank's one of the first people that uh, we all think of now. He's got a great reputation in this area, and, uh, and I'm excited to talk to him today about uh, nanobubbles. So anyway, Frank, uh, thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate you coming on. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having me, Richard. Yeah, so Frank, it's uh, what, June 8th, uh, hard to believe, right? This year seems to be just flying by. How's, how's the season uh, started for you this year? Well, it seems like it uh, kind of never ended. The last few years has just been a, a kind of a whirlwind with all the projects that we've had. And uh, we used to have seasonality when it came to the work that we do. But nowadays, it seems like uh, the projects keep rolling in, which is kind of hard to complain. But uh uh, definitely a difference for sure. Right. It's become more of a management issue, right? Uh, we see some breaks with rain and, and a few other things, but it's just, um, it's just pouring in. That's, uh, that's actually very good, but uh, creates a different, uh, different issue. So anyway, I think, you know, we were talking the other day, Frank, and I, and uh, uh, one thing I wanted to just uh, clarify is um, uh, the large number of installations of uh, nano bubble uh, technology that you've done in the past uh, few months. This is this is catching on quick with uh, with your customers, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, like you mentioned, we're we're pretty hesitant when it comes to using just any product line. Uh, we get approached a lot, and we do a lot of vetting, and uh, there has to be a lot of research, a lot of independent research, and uh, the nano bubble. Technology, I'll be honest, was kind of uh, sketchy at first, or we were a little skeptical because uh, we've seen a lot of other things that sounded similar. Um, but after going through all the trainings, doing all the research, we we learned that there is 100% of benefit in using this technology when it comes to ag irrigation. And um, you know, I think since we introduced it into our product line, we've had some really great successes. Yeah, it's great to hear. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm certainly sold. I, uh, uh, I wish the uh, uh, technology was a little less expensive. I could put it in at my home, but I, I think that's coming. I think we're actually going to see that soon, but uh, you'd know more about that than me. But uh, anyway, just to get started, you know, what, maybe you could help us out and just kind of define what nano bubble technology is. Well, it's kind of in the name. I mean, a nano bubble is a, a nano sized bubble. So nano uh, being about Two times, two thousand times smaller than, say, a grain of salt. So, um, which is extremely tiny. Uh, and what it does is that it helps improve, like the slide says, the the water quality and all the industrial processes through aeration, flotation, and oxidation. Um, so, the, the difference between a nano bubble and just a regular uh, bubble or a micro bubble is 
not just the extreme size difference, but uh, these bubbles, they don't gas off, they don't rise to the surface um, and burst where you lose that, that oxygen, right? So this stays in suspension, um, moves in the water. That's, the, that's one of the main differences. Yeah, so I just want to remind everybody that uh, we do have the chat and the Q&A open today. So if you've got questions or want to make some comments, drop them in there. And uh, I'll definitely relay these uh, questions and in, uh, in, in comments to, uh, to Frank. So, um, so Frank, is the key here that the uh, nano bubbles are, are, are so small? Is that what the big difference is, right? Um, yeah, the, the, the size and the, the characteristics of them not, not gassing off um, allows us to introduce oxygen and a, a higher dissolved oxygen content into the water, um, which, which is in solution for weeks and months in some cases, right? And it allows us to get uh, those gases where we want them, um, which is at the root zone at the soil that you mentioned. Yes, yeah, so um, these are so small, right? Um, 2,000 times smaller than a grain of salt. We can't see them. Um, how how no. do you know they're actually working? Yeah, good question. So because you can't see them, um, you, you kind of have to depend on um, the results, right? And that, that was one of the tough things for us is uh, we saw the research and we saw the uh, both the in-house and independent research, all the case studies, but until we actually put one of the systems in, it was really hard to believe uh, that it was going to work. And uh, the first system we did, you know, what we were targeting, uh, the results were almost immediately uh, visible. So um, I think that that's how you see that it's working is the, the end result. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's visible, no doubt. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, um, and so how, how in, on the practical side, right, I'm very practically natured. Um, how, how do they actually work? You hook up a machine. What, what is this like? Where, where do you put it? Uh, can you kind of step us through that? Yeah. So we, we partnered with a company uh, out of uh, the Southern California called Moliere. And they're, they're the leading, I would say, technology behind, or leading company behind this technology. And they have nanobubble generators. Um, so what they do is they uh, basically diffuse uh, gases and inject these nanobubbles into the water, uh, into a stream of water, and that's how you get them in there. So they, they have a, a machine, several types of machines to handle different flow rates uh, that create these nanobubbles. And uh, you install it um, uh, where about on the line, right? Uh, before your fertilizer injectors, you know, wh wh where, where does all this go? The most common applications are when you have a stored body of water. So uh, reservoirs, uh, ponds, lakes, uh, in indoor farming, we do a lot of tanks. So those are probably the most common types of installations, but we do have inline systems as well that can go say on an ag well or a, um, an existing pumping system. Yeah, so it sounds like almost always upstream of the valves and uh, uh, you can approach it in a, in a big way that way, your biggest body of water. Exactly, yeah. So, and we, we have, we'll, there's some systems later on in the slides that I'll show you that have, you know, flow ranges from 10 gallons a minute to 5,000 gallons a minute. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, so those are some big systems. So yeah, so my, you know, my next question, uh, you know, touches on, well, how does this actually work? And uh, I, I think uh, you've pretty much talked about this already, but anything to add to this, uh, the, this slide? I will say that there's a, there are several other companies that, that have technology like this, but I think Moliere is unique in how they do it. Um, and I, I think listening to, to Warren's uh, webinar will be extremely helpful on the exact science behind this, how it works. Um, I'm not the engineer, but we, we know pumping and uh, we know fertigation, we know water. So um, basically, like it says, it's, uh, we're diffusing the gas through the, the open flow water system. Okay. All right. Great. And Frank, is there an industry that uh, has really, uh, this has really caught on with right now? Somebody, you know, a group where you know, it's kind of had a domino effect or do you just see it spread out through all ag products? You know, it's, I think it initially where we have placed these products has been in uh, indoor farming. So uh, vertical farms, uh, greenhouses, um, a lot of cannabis uh, facilities. So anywhere where we 
we were already storing water and we had water treatment issues uh, is where the bulk of the success that we've had. Um, and we're now expanding into you know, larger reservoirs, um, your traditional ag applications, a lot of hydroponics. So anywhere where, where water is, is stored or you, you have some type of water quality issue, or you just wanna see a benefit uh, of oxygen in your water is, is where we're putting these. So uh, cannabis, obviously the early adopters, uh, they, they, the, those growers tend to, to adapt to technology a lot quicker. Um, but now I, um, we're seeing more and more success with the, the hydroponic berry growers, um, you know, and a lot of other growers who, who have reservoirs, for example. Yeah, so uh, Frank, we're getting a, a couple of questions coming in, but before we get to those, I just want to say, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I found um, the few cannabis growers I do talk to, they seem to have a level of interest that is uh, very high when it comes to water management and uh, and, and how they uh, they feed their plants, right? They get the, the, the correlation between uh, nutrient and water. Um, do you find that too? And, and, and if you do, why do you think that is? You do, and especially with the growers who are growing indoor or growing in greenhouse or another controlled environment, is uh, they can see the runoff of the water that they're applying, and in most cases, uh, the growers that we're working with are also measuring it. So if you have you know ten percent drain um, and growing in a substrate media, you, you don't have a lot of room for error, right? And um, not only do you have to collect and treat that drain water, but you also have to be providing the, the most accurate, the, the most chemically free, um, you know, the healthiest oxygen rich water that you can to your plants. So I, I think those growers are, are definitely more conscious in some cases when it comes to the quality of the water they're applying, because uh, for them, it's limited. And, um, you know, the, the area that they have to work with the water is very limited in most cases. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. That's interesting. So uh, one of the questions that's come in and uh, boy, it's a, it's a tough technical question. I'll say that for sure. But how, how many machines would be required for say a typical uh, aer aeration of a lagoon with a hundred thousand uh, gallons of water? Um, I know that's kind of off the cuff. It, yeah. I mean, it, it's really what it comes down to is the, the dwell time of that water. So, you know, how, how often are you filling that lagoon with new water? Um, how, how often that water is leaving that lagoon or is it just stagnant, right? So we work with Moliere to, to size these systems for the appropriate application. And it really comes down to how many times we need to touch that water and what the target goal is. So if it's algae control, like this uh, clear system shown on this picture, um, where we're just treating a, say a pond or a, you know, a recreational area of just water, then um, those systems can be a lot smaller. But if we have a, a reservoir for an ag application that's using a ton of water daily and introducing new water to that reservoir, then, um, you know, we could have several units uh, just to keep up with that demand. So um, it really depends on the application, but a fairly easy uh, exercise to do. Yeah, okay. All right, interesting, right? It's uh, it's a math. So, and yeah. then, um, about uh, nano bubble oxidation of iron in water. Uh, you have any experience with that or? This has recently come up um, with a lot of the ag wells in some of the Southern areas we work with uh, having a lot of iron bacteria problems. Uh, we haven't uh, actually installed anything for this specific application, but we are working with uh, Moliere to come up with a solution um, for that issue as well, because the, the Adding oxygen with a nano bubble to your water is a natural uh, oxidant, right? So um, we're just we're working on some testing to determine how we can do that effective, effectively. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. And then we had another question here about uh, uh, using uh, nano bubbles with um, a normal drip irrigation system uh, to to help improve crop yield. Uh, have you seen that as it worked? What, what What do you know there? Yeah, when, when it comes to crop yield, I know we're pretty leery when, it, when discussing that because a lot comes down to the grower and a lot of other varying factors. But just inherently, if you're in, in 
improving the water quality, um, improving the, the good bacteria in your water, uh, increasing the dissolved oxygen. And if you just do that, you, you will most definitely see some improvement in your crop yields, right? But we're lo lucky to work with a lot of good growers. Um, so the benefits they may see may not be strictly yield driven, but uh, more so the other, other benefits of this technology, you know, keeping your lines clean, uh, healthy roots, right? So um, if you have a huge yield increase, you know, great, but we, we really strive to, to push the other aspects of this technology that we see are really, really beneficial. But we do have growers that did, do have yield increases um, and they will, they will tell you that it's strictly because of the nanobubble technology. Yeah, so, okay, so, um, right. Uh, it's always gonna be a combination of factors, but uh, certainly this would be a, a big factor. Yeah, definitely. So uh, Frank, you may have, uh, you must have some uh, interesting uh, installations you've done uh, over, over the past uh, few months or years. Uh, any in particular you'd like to talk about right now? Yeah, this, this picture on the, the left of my screen is a, a Neo system for Moliere and it's probably one of the most common systems that we install, um, uh, mainly on tank farm type systems, some outdoor reservoirs um, and, that's probably the most common unit that we've installed. Um, these, these bigger units here in the middle on the right are obviously a lot larger. The one in the center is a container, containerized unit. Uh, the one on the right is actually on a trailer that's available for rent. So uh, these treat higher volumes of water. Um, like I said, we, the, the Neo on the left, I think is a Neo 150. So it's 150 gallons a minute or the one in the center, I believe can do about a thousand gallons a minute. Uh -huh. So, yeah, it just depends on the, again, on the application. And we've done, you know, from the smallest and we're working on some very, very large applications right now. So, yeah, very nice. And um, so is the, uh, does it matter the geography or are you starting to see this uh, become popular all over? Yeah, I mean, with the, the increased interest in controlled environment ag, um, I think more and more growers are looking at this technology uh, as a standard practice to their to their operations, right? And installation is easy, as easy as a pump. It's inlet outlet um, with some minor specifications. Um, these units that you see here on the bottom right is the the new unit that's a small 10 gallon a minute unit uh, oh. called the Lotus, and that Titan unit in the middle can handle. Uh, upwards of 5,000 gallons a minute. So, uh, you know, outside of just ag irrigation, there's wastewater uh, treatments for this um, and other applications that we don't necessarily do too much of. But for ag irrigation, I think uh, with all the water water issues we have, especially here in California, you're going to start seeing more and more of this type of technology um, and these specific units uh, become standard for a lot of growers. Yeah, that's fantastic to hear. Now, um, a couple things here. Um, the technology comes laid out in this type of setup. So I really don't have to do much to install it. No, I mean, we even, if the grower wants to install it themselves, we have kits available. Um, you know, our technicians can come out and commission it. It's, it's really as simple as some basic pro programming and some basic plumbing. I mean, um, all of it's packaged. Uh, and ready to go. Um, some of the units do require uh, external oxygen, um, but a lot of them have onboard oxygen, oxygen generators. So um, it, it really is something that um, once you get past uh, the does it work phase, just is an uh, easy purchase, right? And a, a quick ROI, especially if you're using chemical treatments to try to accomplish the same goals. Yeah, talk about a clean, nice setup. Boy, that's uh, that's really attractive to me. And then the one on the bottom right, the green one. This is the one I've been waiting for, right? This uh, this might have yep. uh, applications in, uh, in in landscape also. Exactly, it's it, ten gallons a minute or a thousand gallons per day. So uh, very small, um, compact, really designed for um, growers who who are smaller, um, even some landscape applications for sure. Yeah, that should be available this year. So yeah.
Yeah, I'm excited for that one in particular. So Frank, have you noticed any positive effects on reducing scaling and drip lines as a result of uh, using this technology? We have actually the, some of the first installations that we did were specifically to target um, buildup in PVC lines in an indoor growing facility. So um, what we found was a lot of growers aren't as uh, stringent on their flushing programs, or sometimes there's a lot of uh, precipitants in the nutrients they're using. So uh, the nanobubble technology actually helps keep those lines clean and scour those lines to clean them initially. Uh, once we got past getting all that stuff out, the, out of the lines, we found that the lines have remained clean, which is um, huge for a lot of guys, especially when you know these, these facilities are a lot of uh, on-demand drip systems. So the lines stay charged for the most, most of the time. So um, it's really important that they stay clean. Yeah, I think about what a, what a nice advantage that is, right? Not to have to worry about that, not to have to inspect necessarily as much for that. And, uh, and more importantly, not having to uh, repair or deal with uh, uh, in any problems I had as a result of the scaling. Yeah, exactly. We've, we've seen some scaling inside PVC lines that have reduced the inside diameter of those pipes by half. So it's, it's pretty amazing and, and pretty quickly as well. Yeah. So Frank, uh, any, any other uh, in, uh, large installations or small installations, we don't care, uh, that uh, really come to mind where you, th where you think, wow, that, uh, that really made a big difference? Yeah, I mean, there's uh, uh, some hydroponic strawberry operations um, that are dependent again on the, the water quality that they're providing to those those strawberry plants in a really small substrate media. So by increasing the dissolved oxygen in those cases uh, through nanobubble technology, we have seen some really, really benefits of nutrient uptake, um, just overall plant health. And again, the, the benefit of keeping those lines clean. So um, we're, like I said, we're, we're gonna start seeing more and more of this um, on your traditional growing applications as well. Um, once we get some, some more inline units installed, I think we'll, we can talk about those benefits too. Okay, great. So Frank, if, uh, if somebody wants some help with this or has additional questions, uh, uh, can, okay if they uh, reach out and get a hold of you? Yeah, like always, you could find me on the gram. So, and then there's my uh, email down there. Feel free to reach out. Um, you know, if we don't specifically know the answer, I'm sure we could find it. Um, and uh, uh, you know, like I said, IDC has what, eight locations in California, so we're here to help. Yeah, and that, what a generous offer, actually. I hope everybody's really understanding that uh, Frank's sincere in this. Uh, if you need some help, have some questions, or think of something later on that you wanted to answer that we didn't cover today, please reach out and do it. He'd be happy to help you out. You know, he's got a real passion for this, and uh, uh, you know, he really uh, lives, breathes, and uh, talks this every day. This is what he does. And uh, he does it because he loves it. So uh, Frank, uh, thanks so much for being on today. Uh, this was really uh, interesting and helpful. And um, like I said, I can't wait to get the uh, uh, one of these Moliers going at my, at my place. So uh, uh, thanks very much. And Definitely. Appreciate it. Say thank you to everybody who tuned in today. Uh, you know, uh, we appreciate you spending some of your day with us. Uh, as you know, you can see all our trainings at uh, the janesusa.com website forward slash trainings or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. You know, I love that uh, we can be working and, uh, and learning at the same time. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to do. So anyway, Frank, uh, thanks again. We really appreciate it. Thanks to all of you. And uh, we'll see you back here Friday. We're going to be talking about uh, some ag tech and uh, how to best check your soil moisture sensors to make sure they're actually doing the job they're supposed to be doing. So that'll be kind of a fun one for Friday. So thanks again, everybody. Uh, appreciate it, Frank. And uh, we'll talk to you all soon. Thank you.